Thank you everyone for joining us. Um, uh, my name is Tara Andringa and I'm the executive director of PAVE. Um, we started these um, panel weekly panel discussions last May. Um, because of the pandemic, we weren't able to do our events anymore. And so we were looking for a way to really connect with people and, and um, we didn't realize they were gonna be wildly popular. And we've also gotten a great chance to, to have conversations about everything we could think of about AVs. Um, and we plan to continue them in 2021 and we're really have some exciting conversations planned. But um, one thing we realized a few months ago, we did a survey of people in the audience and ask them what we could do differently about the panels and what they liked and didn't like. And one question we asked was, did you know about PAVE before joining the panels? And we were surprised by how many people didn't, which was great because we were reaching new people. Um, and so we thought we would, for the last panel of the year, answer all your questions about PAVE. And we've gotten a lot of questions about what we do, why we do it, and wanted to um, answer those questions. And, and we also got a bunch of great questions that you all sent in um, when you registered. So today's panel is just the PAVE staff talking about um, who we are and, and answering your questions. One of the most common um, things that people are surprised about is the PAVE staff. And because a lot of our members are huge corporations, they think that we're a, a sprawling organization when in fact, this is it. Literally the four of us are all of PAVE. And um, in fact, for the first year, it was I was the only full-time PAVE staff. And then in, within the last year, these um, three superstars have joined. So we're just gonna start really briefly with um, introducing ourselves and telling you who we are and what we do, and then we'll get to your questions. And I'm going to go in the order of um, when they joined our staff. So first is Tabitha Coulter, who's our um, Director of Operations. Thanks, Tara. Um, hi, everybody. Like Tara said, my name is Tabitha and I'm PAVE's Director of Operations. Um, I first started working with PAVE in the summer of 2019 while I was still a grad student at Duke um, and then started full time at PAVE in January 2020 after I graduated. Um, so in my role, I help oversee a lot of our different events like demos, conferences, virtual panels, as well as our advisory councils and our member recruitment. Okay, and then next is Jade Kenny, who is the Director of Social Media. Everyone, I'm Jade, as Tara mentioned, and I've been with PAVE officially for a year last week, and it, it's been really exciting to see how much it has grown in just that year. I've been in the auto uh, and transportation industry for the last six years um, in membership roles and in digital media, and I remember the day that PAVE launched. I saw it on social media at CES, and a, a light bulb went off that I just wanted to be a part of it, and I didn't really know if there were openings, like probably some of you. I thought it was this huge um, big team that I was probably no chance I was going to be able to join and I reached out and just said hey I believe in, in the mission I believe in the goal and what you're trying to do and I want to be a part of spreading that message and a year later I've had um, the honor and privilege of joining the digital media team along with Ed who has arrived and been a blessing and uh, with efforts to um, promote and and really like aid that mission um, with the content that we're putting out in digital media to build the public's trust. Great, and then Ed Niedermeyer, our communications director. Yeah, hi, I'm Ed. Um, I uh, have spent most of my career in uh, in the media, um, blogging. I was a freelance analyst for a little bit, um, but uh, but mostly in the media. Um, about four years ago, I, I started a, a podcast called the Autonicast. Um, I had just become, uh, I'd sort of covered the traditional auto industry and was getting more interested in, in the new things that were happening um, with sort of mobility technology, in particular autonomous vehicles, um, that ended up being um, a, a far more successful than than I ever expected, and, and just created the opportunity to to talk with a lot of people in the AV space. And um, that turns out to have been really, really good practice for uh, uh, the job that I've had now since May uh, here at at Pave. Uh, as you know, these weekly discussions are a big part of what we do. But this is also just sort of the very first steps. Um, we're laying a lot of groundwork. I mean, we've already, I, I'm amazed at everything that, that we've done just, you know, this year. And, um, but like I said, we're, we're just laying the, the groundwork and um, I'm so thrilled to be part of this awesome team with these, these awesome folks and um, working on something that I really, really feel deeply passionate about. So um, yeah, and, uh, and I guess, you know, as the newest member here, um, I think I should uh, have Tara uh, sort of explain a little bit to us um, the origins of PAVE, because I think uh, that's also something, I mean, I didn't, before I, I joined PAVE, I, I had all the misconceptions that people already 
spoke about in terms of the size and you know uh, the resources and everything. But um, but Tara, I think her her story about the very beginning of Pave like kind of really helps uh, explain you know what the organization is really all about. Thanks, Ed. Yeah, just um, really briefly, I'll try to tell the um, background of Pave a little bit. Um, first, where I came from, I spent 21 years on Capitol Hill. So um, combination of I was a communications director, so um, used to trying to communicate complicated things to the public. And I also, I'm from Michigan, grew up in the auto industry. So PAVE kind of combined a lot of my passions and interests and background. So um, PAVE really started in a truly grassroots way. And it was a combination of folks from industry, academia, the public sector, who all started having this conversation um, around the idea that obviously companies are putting huge resources into the development of AVs and really believe in the potential of them to make the roads safer and, and um, to increase mobility options and sustainability. And, but there was a disconnect between all of those efforts and then what the public thought. And then you saw a lot of the public didn't trust the technology, was confused about it. And there was a lot of um, misinformation out there. And so the idea was that we needed to bring people together, all of the stakeholders in the AV space to really engage with the public. And the idea is that we're never gonna reach the potential that AVs have if we don't have the public on board. So all these companies um, and organizations and nonprofits joined together. Um, we, have, we started with 19 members at our launch at CES. We have, I think, 63 now. Um, so we've more than tripled in size in two years. Um, and also the diversity of our membership has grown. Like we, we have um, even more um, nonprofits and advocates for different um, uh, issues and, and sort of certainly in the corporate space and um, across industry, we have a lot of stakeholders representing you know, different pieces of AV, the AV world. Um, so that's a little bit about where we came from. We really want to answer. We've gotten such phenomenal questions. We've been so excited about the, the conversation, the questions that we've gotten from you all. So I want to start there. Um, and uh, we were just going to ask each other your questions and, and so you'll get to hear from all of us. Um, first, we're going to start with our communications director because it is a question about um, communications. And the um, someone asked, what are the key challenges to communicating to the public about AVs? And what strategies can you use to help the general public understand the complexities of automated vehicles? So Ed, up to you. Yeah, it's a it's a huge, a huge question. You know, um, one of the things that I find so fascinating about AVs in general is that it's it's this entirely new, it's not just new technology, but it opens these new possibilities that, you know, as a society, we've never thought about really preparing for, right? Um, uh, machines going out and, and making life and death decisions. That's a huge transition and we don't have a playbook for it. And I think by the same token uh, as educators, there isn't really a playbook uh, book about the right way to do this. Um, so I think that's both the challenge, but it's also for me the, the opportunity and the fun. Um, and I think, you know, we here are all um, just like, you know, a lot of the companies who are developing this technology um, are uh, really embracing the need to sort of experiment um, and try new things. I'm personally learning new things about video, uh, you know, to, you know, as a, as a writer, um, you know, didn't really expect to, to get into video in a big way, but I'm really learning uh, more about that. And we're going to continue to, to step that up. But um, I think, you know, we have a lot to learn. We need to continue to learn, um, you know, what, what's effective and what isn't. Um, and uh, I think, you know, it, that's, that's going to take a lot of work given what a complex problem, or, or what a complex technology this is, and also just how low sort of the general understanding of it is. But um, I think the key piece of that is, is actually, you know, the help of our community. Um, and so those of you who are out there who tune in, um, who take the time to learn about this technology uh, and approach it with an open mind um, and not with an agenda, um, you know, you, you all are our community. And I think, you know, your help is going to be really crucial in, in, in making an impact on this. Yeah, and Ed, I really liked your point about all the different possibilities that AVs open up. And so kind of going off of that, we received another question from the audience about how PAVE reaches people outside of the industry. Um, so Jade, as our digital media person, I think you, you know, you think and you work a lot in that space. So I'm curious how you would say that PAVE, you know, goes beyond pe preaching to the choir on this topic. Yeah, obviously that is a huge initiative for us as we are um, building out the strategy for 2021. And 
what's been fascinating is in the last few days, we've had the opportunity to sit down with our current membership um, and just hear what worked, what didn't work in 2020. And something that they said is how much they love our panels, how much they've learned, how they're digestible pieces. But um, their worry was, okay, now you've been preaching, maybe you've been preaching to the choir. So what can we do to take this a step further? Um, and it's exciting because we have an answer for that. What we've decided and what our plan is for 2021 is really um, reaching the consumers where they are. And unfortunately in 2020, that's been here, that's been on Zoom, that's been digitally. So something that we're um, really proud of is implementing a new um, video platform in 2021, where our weekly panels will be able to reach more people, not just people that are part of our choir, if you will, or part of our team that already know who PAVE is, but being able to reach them where they are, reaching them on different platforms like Twitch, Facebook, LinkedIn, um, just to name a few. Uh, that's something that we're really proud of and it's going to be um, a big push for us uh, and, and to be a part of getting into that new algorithm so that we're more searchable um, to people who don't know who PAVE is. Um, and then also just the, the better quality and the ability to have one-on-one -on -one conversations and repurpose um, these uh, this content, maybe reaching and having conversations with our academic advisory council members, um, just really making it more of bringing those intimate conversations to where our consumers are in 20, uh, 2021. As we saw in 2020, our, our demos were taken away, our in-person events were taken away, something that PAVE is really proud of and that we rely on or relied, relied on in efforts to reach those consumers and to show them, to have, give them something tangible. So now we're having to give them something digital. Um, something else we're going to be doing is, uh, which I'm sure that uh, Ed's going to talk about is building out our community um, through something called Friends of Pave, which has really been um, Ed's baby. So I'm going to let him touch on that later. But basically, it's just reaching people where they are, and especially in those different um, demos. So not everyone's on Twitter, not everyone's on LinkedIn. So being able to reach older uh, generations, maybe through Facebook or just different initiatives, and then reaching the next gen, that's something that I'm really proud of and I'm going to take very serious in 2021, is reaching um, the younger gen. Maybe it's on TikTok, uh, reaching them on Twitch. And so a big initiative for 2021 is just really um, expanding the digital efforts that we're doing and reaching people where they are. And that leads me perfectly into our next question that I'm gonna to give to um, Tabitha. So something that we got is obviously asking what other initiatives do we have for 2021? So I'm gonna let Tabitha take that one away. Yeah, um, well, like Jade said, the first good news is we will be continuing our PAVE weekly panel series. Um, so we're gonna keep bringing you those different weekly conversations on topics about AVs. Um, our team has been working really hard on those plans. Um, so I think I'm allowed to give a quick sneak peek uh, for our first three months, months, which is that um, in January, we're going to do a lot of focus on, you know, welcome to the new year, 2021. Um, February, we're going to focus a lot on equity. And then in March, we're going to do a technical deep dive into AVs. So we're really excited for those topics, some of the most important. Um, so then in addition to those weekly panels, like Jade mentioned, we're going to broaden out to those kind of other formats for interviews and videos with experts, um, hopefully bringing some more footage of, you know, vehicles and testing and like what's going on in this space. Um, keep using those panels and this channel to kind of engage with new audiences who can or will be impacted by AVs and, you know, maybe haven't realized it yet, but need to kind of have that knowledge base to think through those questions and those benefits for themselves and their communities. Um, so encouraging more people to get engaged in that process early on, those conversations that are happening right now so that those benefits that we talk about can actually kind of be realized. Um, so then also kind of on that importance of this knowledge foundation for AVs, um, PAVE is also planning to really expand our work in 2021 with policymakers. Um, so we are policy neutral, we don't lobby, um, but we do know that just like the general public, you know, uh, public sector officials will really benefit from having more knowledge about AVs, um, you know, providing them with a framework so they can ask the right questions and think through the right problems as they're making the, those decisions for their communities about um, future technologies. Um, so we're really looking forward to working with those um, public sector partners to bring that out for next year. Um, there are a ton of other things I could talk about too, but I'm not the only one on this panel. So <laughs> I will wrap up with um, a final point, which is that we're going to continue that work we've been doing over the past two years to kind of provide rapid response and um, truth telling when we see misinformation in the space. Um, we know how important it is that people today understand what their vehicles are capable right now of and then what might be coming in the future. Um, and so really getting that record straight on what's available is something we keep prioritizing for our um, mission of an educated public. Um, and Tara, I think one of the things that, that sometimes people overlook, I think sometimes people see the big names uh, of, of companies that they know um, among our membership uh, and don't always necessarily realize that we also have a, a lot of nonprofit um, advocacy groups who are, who are part of us as well. Um, and, uh, and I think also people uh, are clearly curious about, about sort of how we, uh, 
you know, how we do uh, sort of our internal communications. And, um, and so we have a question here that um, I was hoping you could answer. Uh, how have you engaged auto manufacturers and in industry more generally in bringing the public and nonprofit issues and concerns about AVs in a productive way? Do you get the sense that the private sector is receptive to issues and concern raised by your efforts? Yeah, it's such a great question. And um, we've been thrilled that our, obviously, as Ed said, we uh, are uh, really proud of the diversity of our membership. It is everything from, you know, nonprofits, the National Safety Council, National Council on Aging, National Federation of the Blind, um, Mothers Against Drunk Driving, to huge international corporations and all kinds of startups in between. Um, and you look at our diverse membership and you think, like, how do you possibly all come to agreement on anything? And they're really kind of two key beliefs that all of our members share. One is the potential of AVs to improve the safety, mobility, sustainability of the transportation system. And then the second belief is that we will never achieve those benefits if we don't have the public on board. And I really think that our corporate members um, understand that they are all going to be more successful if they have a receptive public. Um, one of my favorite quotes was last year, actually last January at CES, I heard Chris Urmson, the um, co-founder of, of Aurora being interviewed and someone asked him, how do you build public trust? And his answer was, you have to earn it, um, which I think is exactly right. And I think giving people exposure to technology. Um, and in fact, we just got a question in the chat about how, how does the industry and how does your organization establish trust? And we did a poll earlier this spring um, and ask both where the public is now and how would that change? And what we found is that education and exposure were the two things that people thought would move them, that their trust would increase the more they know about the technology and the more exposure they have, a chance to ride in an AV, a chance to learn more about it are the things that will help to build trust. And so that's what we are all about is um, giving people that education and exposure. And it, like we started this question with, and we're thrilled that all of our members agree that they will all they will all be more successful if the public is on board. And then the flip side of that is any, um, you know, what one company does impacts all of them. Um, and that's kind of our, you know, what drives our mission. So um, yeah, but we are thrilled that we are, all our members share this vision. And kind of going off of that vision that Tara is talking about, you know, as we think about those benefits, like she talked about safety, sustainability, accessibility, kind of equity in the system. Um, Ed, I wanted to throw over a question to you that we received from um, a viewer that from Wilshire Consulting who asked kind of at a broader level, can you, Ed, talk about how we can ensure the future world of transportation is inclusive to people with disabilities, you know, both on a technical level of the vehicles and then also just general societal level accessibility in the transportation system? Yeah. Um, this is something I'm, I'm super passionate about. And actually, I would start by kind of building off what, what Tara was just talking about. You know, if um, through our educational efforts, you know, uh, people understand the, the, the benefits of AVs and, and, and more, I think it's more important than that. I think it's actually the, the, ben the real benefits of AVs will be, are more likely to be realized if, if the general public is well educated. And I think that's because anytime you have such a profoundly transformative new technology, it's really important as a society uh, to have a conversation. Um, and I think we're all sort of stakeholders uh, in, in AVs in the sense that we all have things that we want to see come out of them. And I think those, those conversations are really important. And, and it's important that you know, education is what empowers um, those. So I think uh, you know, on one level, um, you know, really making sure to, to just do a good job and in, in getting good information out there will um, help empower um, you know, uh, both our members and others to, to, to be strong advocates for their community. Uh, part of that also from our perspective is just listening. Um, you know, we, we really do try and, and listen as much as we can so that we understand what those concerns are. Um, we also, uh, one of the, the coolest things we did in 2020 was, uh, um, uh, you know, some actual, you know, work ourselves to, to support um, this effort, uh, which was uh, partnering with uh, the U.S. Department of Transportation to do a webinar um, for their inclusive design uh, challenge, which is a, a competition uh, to develop new technologies to help uh, and systems to make uh, autonomous, the next generation of autonomous vehicles more inclusive, more accessible, uh, and really something that can uh, provide mobility to those who are not well served by the current system. Uh, to me, as a, I have a, a sister who's, um, you know, development is disabled, and, and I've worked as a caregiver myself, and I've seen how important, um, not just mobility, but, but personal autonomy, something that we all take for granted. And so I think we're going to continue to listen, we're going to continue to educate, and we're going to continue to, in particular, 
emphasize um, how important this is because um, I think it's really all of our hope. We, we, can, we can talk about these things. We can talk about these benefits. We can talk about the need um, uh, for better mobility um, for those who aren't currently well served by the system. But I think it really is when, uh, again, as, as sort of Tara and Tabitha both uh, discussed, when, when we see these things happening in real life, that's really going to be the, the sort of true you know, change point for, for these things. And PAVE really is, um, like we've all said, we're a champion of our membership and we're only as, we're the voice of our members. So a question, two questions that we received about getting involved. One asked, how can employees of PAVE coalition member companies collaborate with PAVE on its mission? And another one is how can startups collaborate? I'm gonna let Tabitha answer this one because she's been um, just a warrior getting us some startups this year. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm super excited to answer this one. Um, so I'll start with how to get involved as a employee of a PAVE member company. Um, so when an organization joins PAVE, we develop a list with them of their main contacts they want to be involved with PAVE and our activities. Um, most groups have a kind of extensive list. So they might have a comms team member who sits on our media and messaging subcommittee. And then they might have a um, you know public relations, government relations person who sits on their our policymaker, public sector engagement section. Um, so we really kind of try to get all these different people who are involved and engaged who can speak on topics. Um, so my first piece of advice, if you are a member employee, um, would be to see if you can talk to somebody to find out who those contacts are within your organization who are working with PAVE um, and to go through those channels and those existing relationships. If you aren't sure of who's involved, you know, maybe you're a systems engineer who doesn't work with comms or marketing and just doesn't know about that, um, you're always welcome to reach out to us individually and we can point you to those people. We can kind of set up a conversation so you can talk to them. Um, you know, we think education is a really important part at all steps of the AD AV development. We want to make sure that um, work is being highlighted through our own stuff. So um, we are really all on board with getting people at all stages um, of companies involved. Um, so feel free to reach out to us. Um, the second question that Jade asked on how startups can collaborate um, immediately right off the bat is I just want to say we really value our startup members here at PAVE. Um, so I would encourage you first and foremost to consider formally joining us. Um, I think the last time I counted, we had almost a quarter of our members who are startups. Um, and that representation extends all the way to our board. So at all levels of our governance, we try to make sure that that perspective um, is heard. And I think one of the reasons I personally like working with our startups so much is that they bring like such a concentrated enthusiasm and a focus to like the work that they're doing. Um, you know, of course we have those traditional automakers and those L4 companies who are doing incredible work and bring us great experts and information to talk to on the industry side, as well as the nonprofits like Tara was mentioning. But um, I love startups having startups on our panels or highlighted in interviews and things because they're usually taking such a focused and you know unique perspective to one particular problem with AVs and um, from an education perspective for us that's a really cool thing to get to highlight you know this one solution this one problem that they're working on um, so yeah so if you work for a startup and you're wanting to get involved with PAVE or just public education broadly um, you can go to our website pavecampaign.org um, click on the contact form and fill out the um, join request I will be the one who sees it and replies to your email and um, I'd be happy to set up a conversation and talk to you more. Yeah, and and uh, Tabitha's uh, uh, awesome ability to handle all of that incoming is one of the things that really, really keeps <laughs> us keeps us rolling here. Um, so uh, I, I have a question here um, that is a question that I feel like I ask myself just about every day on this job, um, <laughs> and I think we all do, right? All, all four of us, um, and it's part of that learning process I was talking about earlier. But that's, are you aware of particular tools that are available for educating the public about AVs? Um, Jade, maybe let's start with social media. What, what do you got? Yeah, so I would just say um, just using our social media channels, so going to Pave Camp at Pave Campaign, um, everything that we put out is fact checked, and we make sure that we are um, storytelling and, and sharing the benefits of the of this um, technology, as well as um, doing our best to educate. So every time we um, see a member post something, um, me and Ed stay on it and make sure that we're seeing what's going out there. But we think to ourselves, is this educational? Um, because obviously that's the mission of PAVE. So everything that is on the news feed, you can trust that it's from a trusted source um, about this technology. And also I would just say, um, go to our YouTube channel, um, check out our library of panels. It is such a great um, resource uh, to, to learn more about this technology and, and um, just really what's happening real time in the industry. Um, we have over 28 uh, panels on there right now from a range of different topics. So um, I would say definitely go on there and there's plenty more to come in 2021. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. And 
Go ahead, Tabitha. Go ahead. I was, I was about to, <laughs> I was I was about to go say, to you. <laughs> I know you have some uh, things to share. This is what happens when two moderators are on the panel <laughs> instead. <laughs> um, so in addition to those kind of real-time facts that Jade was talking about, we also work to create a permanent collection of resources on AVs through our website. So we have a resource library that has over 500 different resources, um, formats ranging from videos, like all of our previous panels that they were talking about, to uh, PowerPoint slides for um, professors on how to talk about AVs, um, white papers, research papers, academic journal publications, um, kind of every format. Um, and we think this database is really important since this technology is so new and constantly evolving you know, personally, when I was in grad school, I would have loved to have this kind of a resource, you know, where kind of all this information is collected um, to let people inside and outside the industry learn more. Um, and we're also looking forward to our future efforts to kind of make this information more digestible and accessible to the general public. Um, yeah. yeah, and, and if, if that's a project that you're interested in, um, you know, maybe hit us up on our contact form, because that's certainly something that we can use help with uh, in terms of further structuring some of that, those resources that we have. Absolutely. Okay, we are running out of time, but we have two quick round questions. We're gonna that I want all four of us to touch on because they're really big picture and, and I think um, give you a great overview. One is about um, Pave's progress so far, and one is about Pave in the future. So we wanted to try to get both of these in. Um, the first one is what areas have you seen Pave progress the most since the organization started? Um, and I will start with just the really big picture. Um, our membership has grown, like I said earlier. We went from 19 to 64. We've in, um, grown in our diversity in terms of what little piece of the AV world people are looking at. Um, and then also one thing is I really have seen PAVE, and I don't give us full credit for this, but we have helped to expand the conversation. When you go to industry conferences, it used to be really focused more on technical pieces and, and the concept of educating the public has become an increasingly um, visual part of the conversation, which I think is really important and just that public engagement part. Um, Tabitha, <laughs> what have, um, how have you seen PAVE progress the most? Yeah, I think the biggest thing for me has been our relationships, not just with our members, but with our advisory councils. So this year we launched both an academic advisory council and a public sector engagement council and kind of to really watch PAVE like spread those roots in those communities to make sure that the work that we're doing is academically rigorous, is useful and valuable to public sector organizations. Um, and then combining, you know, all of those, the research, the work, the case studies that are going on in those places and kind of putting them into our database, both our formal resource library and then also in our own brains as we think about what we're bringing to the public with panels and stuff. Jake? I think um, for me, it's it's the numbers speak for themselves. Our social media, our um, online presence has grown. We've seen a 98% uh, growth in all of our channels in 2020 across six different platforms, uh, 2.6 impressions, which means that's how many people we've um, reached and engaged and has seen the content that we're putting out of our members and the work that they are doing. Um, and we've seen um, up to a 70% followers increase in our Twitter. Twitter. So uh, for me, it's just leading back to our mission and the education. Those are eyes that are seeing the work that all of our membership are doing. Ed, you wrap it up. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's, it's been a couple of things. Um, and just even in the, the short time since I've been here, I'm, I'm very proud of the fact that we have been able to do um, some sort of rapid response when uh, when news breaks and, and it needs to either be sort of clarified or or sort of uh, you know confusion needs to be uh, yeah cleared up um, you know that's it's a lot harder than it, it seems because we have to sort of very rapidly build consensus among our 60 members uh, or 60 plus members um, and uh, you know we've been experimenting about how to you know do that well and I think it's one of many things that we're continuing to learn on but um, but I've been really proud of what we've been able to accomplish on that and I'm looking forward to continuing to do that. Um, and also sort of going along with that, I think, you know, we really, um, uh, you know, really emphasize sort of, uh, you know, our, our educational credibility and how important that is that, you know, at the center of everything that we do is, is education. Um, and, uh, and, you know, it's been really cool to see sort of, you know, with our friends in the media, um, sort of having more people uh, turning to us uh, as a resource, when when news breaks and and things need to be explained, um, things need to be clarified, and and whether that's something that we're able to to talk on the record or whether it's something we're just helping on background, um, you know, we we're here for them, and, and it's been great to to have uh, uh, our friends in the media take us up on that. So, um, you know, and I think uh, most of all, we're just we're just getting started here. Um, I mean, I think 2021 has we got so much exciting stuff coming. So, um, we're really glad that you're paying attention now, but uh, you haven't seen nothing yet. 
Um, so off of that note, and to wrap us up real quick as a fitting in for our final panel of 2020, um, I want to end with a question about 2021. So uh, Tara, let's start with you. What area are you most excited to expand or work with in the future of PAVE? I would say our demonstration events. We've done a few in the past. We couldn't do them during COVID, but like we said earlier, I think the single thing that helps to people um, build trust and move people the most is getting firsthand exposure to the technology. And we love it when people go on a demo ride and then get out and say, that was kind of boring. It felt just like riding in a car and which is exactly what we're going for. We want it to be smooth and easy and, and build trust. So hope we can expand those as soon as the pandemic ends. Tabitha, what about you? <laughs> Great question. Um, so it's similar to you, like working with the general public again, um, the area I'm most excited for is our engagement with the public sector and policymakers. We plan to roll out a series of workshops with policymakers. So kind of empowering those groups with the foundation of knowledge and framework of questions is something I'm really passionate about and really excited to get to see expand. Um, Ed, what about you? Yeah, um, uh, a bunch of things, but um, the two big ones are, are uh, sort of Friends of PAVE, which is our, our sort of where we're going to sort of work on developing our community and and sort of uh, working with them to develop a, a knowledge base. You know, if you're here today right now, there's a good chance that you're probably like, a, a, you know, engaged enough in this uh, stuff that you might be a, a you know the kind of person who would enjoy and get get something out of this. Um, and I think it's going to be cool to see that that community uh, evolve. And if that's something you want to be part of, again, uh, please uh, drop us a line at the contact form. Uh, I'm also really excited about the next step we'll be taking with uh, our video, uh, our live video, um, and just sort of everything we're doing with video. But in particular, uh, as Jade was talking about, um, the fact that we're going to be streaming to a bunch of different platforms, uh, we're going to be getting higher quality video. Uh, if you like uh, these weekly discussions, they're about to get better. So I'm really excited to see, uh, see that. And then Jade. I'll wrap it up. Um, what I'm really excited about, something I've been passionate about since starting here at PAVE is reaching, like I said, the next generation. So how can we um, continue our mission of educating? How can we provide resources? And I saw in the chat, there was a question, um, how to educate parents about teen drivers on these technologies. And that's something that um, I feel really strongly about in 2021 that I, I will fight for PAVE to um, make sure that we do in 2021 is, is providing those educational packets and to schools as well as getting more involved in robotics clubs, um, getting involved on TikTok so that we can um, do our part to reach the next generation and educate as well as their parents and their consumers. <laughs> and I will say as the mom of two teenagers that is near and dear to my heart as well. Um, but we are out of time. Thank you all for joining us both today and, and all of our panels all year. Um, we are super excited to uh, continue them in 2021, and you will be getting notices about that, and I hope you join us then too. Please send us any comments or suggestions you have, and best wishes for happy and very safe holidays to everyone. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Happy holidays. Happy holidays.